Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First up, we have 73 citizens' time. Anybody in the room or remote, please raise your hand. Yes. Come on down. Just for the, uh, for the record, please identify yourself and if you're a resident and where you live, and then you got three minutes. Z Z Wang, um, I live on Fort Cliver Road and um, town meeting member of uh, Prison 5. I'm actually here to say thank you tonight regarding the Moss Street project. And uh, uh, three weeks ago, the residents uh, reached out to you guys Paul, I, I know you remember that. And uh, um, it's only been three weeks, two signs on each end of the street. It's great, because a lot of cars are taking shortcut on that street. And uh, there are kids playing in that street, so it's, it hasn't been very safe. And then we're just like really impressed at how fast this gets done. So I'm here to say thank you to um, actually Sherry and Mom too, Sherry, Paul, and uh, all of you guys, and uh, um, the staff traffic advisory subcommittee, I guess, they're in mob too, and also DBW, whoever did the work, and um, keep the residents and kids safe. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Z. Much appreciated. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody online? Let's go ahead and raise your hand, and we can unmute you if you want to say anything. No? I know. It's, it's a thrilling opportunity. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, item 74, we've got a couple of appointments to the DPW. Mr. White, you here? There he is. We have a, a busier, uh, a more fuller room than usual tonight, so losing folks in the crowd. Ryan, good to see you. Good evening. Uh, so I'm here uh, for, the, for the first item to uh, provide recommendations for um, actually two hires uh, for both for the same position uh, in our highway division uh, special heavy equipment operator um, so the first uh, recommendation would be for uh, mr. Brian Hughes uh, mr. Hughes has operated his own business specializing in stump grinding and snow and ice removal for over 20 years uh, also attended Bentley University's business management school uh, he has 15 years of experience in construction working for Verizon, installing and repairing cable and underground conduit. Uh, he has his municipal hoisting license, which includes classes 1C, 2B, and 4G, uh, and is actively pursuing uh, several others. Uh, I believe Brian will be a great fit for, for our division. Uh, I'm recommending him. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, and with Brian's recommendation, I appoint Brian Hughes to the position of Special Heavy Equipment Laborer. Uh, operator laborer in the Burlington DPW Highway Division and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. Or moved. Second. Okay, motion to moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. 4 0 0. Congratulations. Is he here tonight? He is. Congratulations. Brian, I got not to. He definitely does heavy equipment, huh? I thought he was gonna break my hand. <laughs> no. uh, so, second uh, second recommendation is for uh, Mr. Derek Forty. Uh, Mr. Forty is uh, a Burlington High School graduate. Uh, went to. Uh, Worcester State University to obtain his bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Uh, during his time uh, at Worcester State, he worked as a summer employee for our recreation department. Uh, his passion is working outdoors and with his hands, uh, and he's begun furthering his career uh, in, in construction by obtaining his 2A hoisting license, uh, and likewise is pursuing uh, several other licenses. Uh, he is OSHA 10-hour uh, road and infrastructure safety certified, uh, also first aid and CPR. Uh, so he takes safety serious, uh, which is important in, in our line of field. Um, 
So I believe Derek would be a, a great fit as well for our highway division and recommend he be appointed. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, and with Brian's recommendation, I appoint Derek Forty to the position of Special Heavy Equipment Operator Laborer in the Burlington DPW Highway Division and ask that the board waive its 15-day waiting period. So moved. Second. Gets moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. All right, congratulations. I assume you're sticking around for the next one. I am, yes. One's favorite topic. <laughs> yes. Uh, item, item 75, uh, we've got uh, discussion and approval on the water ban. Go ahead and take it away. Sure. So uh, um, the uh, water ban from uh, last year, the, the uh, mandatory outdoor watering restriction is was uh, is still on, um, is still active. Uh, it was it was never, we were, never came before you to, to remove it. So. Um, Given that we're going into the new new uh, new summer season, uh, and that Mill Pond uh, has gotten to the to the to the top again, and we reestablished supplies at Mill Pond, along with uh, the MWRA connection, which is uh, expected to finish um, end of June or so, um, we are recommending that the out mandatory, the full mandatory outdoor watering restriction. Uh, be removed um, and in its place um, implement uh, uh, water conservation method uh, or water conservation standard for um, outdoor watering restriction for irrigation uh, on an even odd um, number of days uh, between the hours of 9, a 9 p.m. and midnight or midnight and uh, uh, 9 a.m. All right, gentlemen, uh, questions, comments, Jim? Just real quick, uh, so Brian, just uh, because residents are t hearing us talk about water ban and water use, I just want to make it clear that this is a reduction in the water ban or a lesser of a ban so that people, so we're not in that full water ban anymore. I just want to make sure that they're, they're aware that it's not, we're taking a step back and allowing more usage of water is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. In these, um, um, I hate to use the word ban. It's it's more a conservation uh, method. So it, it's still allowing for um, all the core business functions, uh, hand watering gardens, uh, flower beds, um, and uh, and as as a condition of joining the MWRA, we are uh, required to promote water conservation methods. So uh, this is, in fact. Um, complying with that condition of our, our, our connection. Um, and um, in the landscaping industry, uh, it's, it's widely accepted that you should be uh, watering on a, on a more infrequent basis and higher, higher volume. So an even odd uh, seems to be um, that a, a good compromise. We do have, um, we are still um, similar to past years, uh, allowing for new lawn exemptions. So uh, if you do, if anyone is planting new lawns, um, they, they just need to contact us uh, via online form or give our, give our office a call or email us um, and we'll, we'll grant uh, waivers for new, new lawns. They still have to follow the, um, the time, uh, time of day requirements, but they would be able to water um, every day. Thank you. Joe? No, he answered my question. I was just going to have him go over the new lawn exemptions, but he already he just said that, so that's a good thing. Yeah, and uh, I do want to note, um, similar to years before, uh, those exemptions are only during uh, April, May, and then uh, September and October. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brian, you said phase 2A is going to be completed at the end of June. Yes. Um, is there a possibility for an even lesser water conservation rule after phase 2A is done, or is this pretty much what we're going to look at for the whole summer? Uh, we envision that this will be um, kind of a yearly requirement, as I said, as part of the condition to join the MWRA. The state uh, wants to see us promoting water conservation uh, 
uh, and to prioritize our mill pond treatment plant before MWRA. And in order to do that, um, you know, we would need uh, conservation measures in place. So um, we think this will pr probably be an annual thing, but we definitely are not expecting the uh, more extreme measures uh, that we've had recently um, year to year. Um, Aside from that, we are still obligated to follow um, state uh, drought requirements and or MWRA um, if they implement their, you know, it's their water supply so they can uh, implement their own restrictions that we would have to follow. In your experience, does the MWRA do that a lot? Uh, no, uh, similar. I, I think they um, promote that conservation method, uh, the, you know, every other day, um, you know, sensible. Um, um, measures, but um, you know, I, I think they they have a they they're always promoting uh, that they have uh, a few years worth of uh, water supply before. Okay, thank you, Brent. Trouble. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good thing that we we cut back on watering. I think that well, although this is a very general statement, water is a finite resource, you know, that we need to be managing. Um, and I think that the last couple of years of heavy droughts have shown just how quickly our supply can just disappear quite literally um, Brian so the the fines so we've got um, sorry would you, would you remind everyone what the fines are if yes you... yep so the fines are consistent um, as they have been I think uh, unchanged since early 2000s or so so um, anyone uh, any any person that uh, these are in the bylaws if anyone wants to follow up with it uh, section 5.9 um, uh, any person that 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 violates uh, is issued a, a warning for the first violation. Uh, uh, second violation is fifty dollar fine, and then a uh, hundred dollar fine for each subsequent violation after that. Uh, it's uh, not related to the water, but I just wanted to mention this while you're up here. I was at an event um, with Selectman of Spayho about two weeks ago, and a resident came up to me and said, "Hey, can I talk to you about potholes?" Oh, here we go. But I was pleasantly surprised because the resident said, I want to thank you guys for getting the potholes fixed so fast. So it's not really us, it's you and your, your uh, workers, but thank you for being so quick to respond and fill those potholes because it was nice to hear someone not complain about them. So. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, and that credit goes definitely to the, uh, to the staff for responding oh, so that quickly. that guy sitting over there? Mr. Keene. Yeah. <laughs> and all right, well, there's no more comments. Uh, I'm willing to entertain a motion with regards to uh, reducing this uh, ban down to a... Oh, I'll make that motion, absolutely. <laughs> so moved. Second. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Thank Brian. you. Okay. Thank you, Brian. All right, next up, we have a uh, couple of proclamations we're going to get through. Uh, first up, we've got uh, the Mount Bear Effect. I know there are some board members in the audience tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask if any of the board members want to come up and talk about the model there for a hot second before I read the proclamation. I'm going to put that out there. If not, I'm just going to read the proclamation. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, and good evening. Hello. Good evening. For the record, please introduce yourselves into the microphone. Uh, my name is Jenna Lloyd, and I work with the Mama Bear Effect, a nonprofit right here in Burlington. Zara Axelrod, board member for the Mama Bear Effect. I'm Joe Carrillo, board member for the Mama Bear Effect. Thank you all for being here. Jenna, if you want to take a minute and just talk about the Mama Bear Effect. Sure. Can I sit? No. <laughs> Please. Sorry, guys. Sit down. So the Mama Bear Effect is a nonprofit right here in Burlington, and where do I look? Do I look at you guys? Is TV? I'm like so confused. Don't worry about the camera. <laughs> um, and we are a nonprofit started by Adrian Simeone about uh, 12 years ago, and the main purpose is to raise awareness and help parents educate their children on body safety for the prevention of sexual child abuse. Um, gentlemen, any questions for the board members while they're here? Before just, I... just a thank you for all you do. Well, 
Well, it's, it's, I've been here the whole time, so it's, I think it's fantastic what you do for the kids in town, the parents and everyone else that you help out. It's unbelievable. Yeah, thank you for all the work you do, and um, especially enjoyed the um, the softball fundraiser this yes, year. So hopefully we'll have another one next year. Might be emceeing again this Oh, year. maybe, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. The voice, the voice in the stands. That's <laughs> fabulous. Well, with that, I will read this proclamation and then provide it over to you. Uh, so, whereas the Mama Bear Effect strives to raise awareness and prevent child sexual abuse by using down-to-earth educational resources to help families all over the world, and whereas with the slogan, Rock the Talk, the Mama Bear Effect is helping to break the silence and create a community where all children are protected, respected, and empowered, and whereas the Mama Bear Effect offers a range of materials and research that help to begin conversations and change the stigma of sexual abuse from a mindset of silence and shame to courage and compassion, and whereas by visiting the Mama Bear Effect website, there are opportunities to learn about the different forms of abuse, what motivates abusers, and the impact on survivors, the ability to find tools for parents and educators to destigmatize abuse prevention and body safety talks with children, and to learn how to minimize the risk of abuse and address behaviors and situations that cause concern. And whereas the Mama Bear Effect believes it is up to us to create an environment where innocence is protected, and we, are, and we set a standard where it is understood that just like a mama bear in the wild, nothing will come between us and our desire to protect our children. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Burlington Select Board that April is recognized as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the town of Burlington, Massachusetts, and recognizes the tremendous efforts put forth by the Mama Bear Effect in protecting the children of Burlington and beyond. Thank you all very much Thank for your you work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is for you. If you want to, I'll, I'll come to you. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to say a few words? I just wanted to thank, thank you all you. for um, raising awareness with us today. This this act really does help um, spread the message, um, and you know we'll we'll go into April Child Abuse Prevention Month with with all of your support. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I mean, as a, as a Burlington parent, I just am also so grateful to be raising my family in a town that supports. Uh, initiatives such as the Mama Bear Effect. It's an issue that affects all of us that work and care and love for children, so we appreciate all the support we're getting from the community and hopefully to continue to get that support moving forward. Just remember this, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Just remember, we're always here for you. This board and any board before us or after us will always yes. be here for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys have a great night. All right. You too. Thank thanks. you. All right, next up, we have a proclamation for the Sons of Italy. You know, we have some gentlemen here. I'd like to bring you up to the. Uh, oh. Fate avanti e sediti. Fate avanti. Sediti. Sediti. Yes. <laughs> Tell them to come forward and sit down. <laughs> Chip's, Chip's getting fancy. Yeah, right. It's bilingual. It's subtitles on the uh, <laughs> BCAT broadcast. <today. laughs> gentlemen, thank you for coming before us tonight. Uh, same, the same uh, requests or the opportunities offered to you for anything you want to take a few minutes and talk to us about the Sons of Italy and uh, why you're here this evening. And, and then I know Jim has the uh, proclamation for you. I think the very first thing that I should uh, suggest is that we are both octogenarians. Our hearing oh, is not us, as good as it should be. So both of please. us are currently wearing our VA provided hearing aids. Which so, we've always to be desired. If you can bear with us, yes. we will. Um, we'd like to tell you a little bit about um, the lodge that we, re we have represented, the Burlington Sons of Italy, which was in existence for 52 years here in Burlington. Um, <clears throat> Don here, Mr. McGowan, was the president for a good many of those years. Um, I was the vice president. It no longer exists. <clears throat> um, times have changed. Situations have changed. I think what we're looking for is simply a bit of recognition from the town because we have done a great deal for Burlington, not only in terms of donations, but um, many of the people um, many of our leaders in the past have been part of this board. Um, I could recite a whole bunch of names. I'm sure that you would recognize them. 
above and beyond that, we have done an awful lot. And by the way, these two documents that I left are simply examples. And um, <clears throat> if you find them, uh, if you have a moment to read them at some point, I think you can get an idea of what we have accomplished and what we're about. Um, we're here tonight simply to um, ask the town to recognize us in some fashion. It really doesn't matter whether it's a, it, anything at all um, would be um, most appreciative. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you. I, I could go on for a very long time with the achievements. Um, we've helped an awful lot of people here in Burlington over the past half century. And when I say half century, I, I personally find it difficult to believe that um, as many years have gone by, but so be it. Um, I, I don't know, perhaps you have some questions or things that you would like to um, ask us, we would be happy, but we, we've done just about everything in the past. Um, we've um, um, had some good times. We've spent a great deal of time trying to help people. Um, we have had, I think it, no, it's not included there. We offered Italian language classes taught by um, all professionals, college level professionals for how many years? Uh, 21 years, 25 years. For about 25 years, we, um, we had um, four levels of language classes in Italian. We never got to the point where we had our own home, unfortunately, but because of that, we were able to do an awful lot in terms of monies to help other organizations, specifically the high school. We've contributed, and I think you know, there's a document there that um, we've contributed to um, Burlington High School um, scholarship fund um, since inception, since we first started, and that was um, approximately 52 years ago. Um, in addition to that, we've, we've um, managed to do a lot of um, um, work to help people here in Burlington. And we've also had some very good times. The only thing that we never quite got to was um, our own home here in Burlington. However, that enabled us to contribute that much more to the general public. Um, our organization has aged, I think, pretty much like any of the cultural organizations today, the Irish, the Polish, and whatnot. It's a different America, a very different America from the time that we started. Um, at any rate, it, you know, I, there's so much detail to get into, but essentially, we're here. We think, uh, we feel that we have, um, contributed to Burlington, we are asking Burlington to simply recognize us in some fashion, if that is reasonable and possible. And um, do, do you want to add anything to it? You stole all my thunder. There's nothing left for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What I was going to say was the uh, our lodge shut down in December, just a week before Christmas. People will say, well, if it's so great, why did you shut down? Attrition took its toll on us. People were just dying off, and we couldn't motivate anybody young enough to join our board. Uh, I was president for 20 years, and probably 10 of them I tried to get out of the job, because I always believed that uh, for an organization to be vital, you need a change in leadership from time to time. Otherwise, it gets stale. Uh, well, my 18th year, I was lucky to find one guy who's willing to be president. And he was just president for a short time, uh, he was trying hard, he did a decent job, and next thing you know, he got transferred to a, another job, was on second shift. I'm back to president again. Uh, then the next guy I, I conned into taking the job, he was very enthusiastic. And he got reassigned at work, and I'm back again. So I reached a point where the, the uh, writing, handwriting was on the wall. We couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. 
Um, I couldn't motivate anybody to run for president. So we took a vote and most of the members said, let's shut down. We only had 20 active members left when we did. We had 40 members totally, but only 40, 20 were active. And so the mood was, has changed. Attrition killed us, and uh, that's the biggest thing, but just all these factors together. We took a vote, and there's only three of us wanted to keep going. Everybody else said, let's call it a day. So we took the money we had in the Treasury, which was significant, and sent a check to the Burlington High School for the scholarship fund. So that was our last good deed we did for the town. We, I think we accomplished a lot in our years. And I want to correct Pat. He said the Italian language class is four levels. We had six levels. Six levels, yes, I'm sorry. And um, our efforts were not only for Burlington, we did take up collections for other things like the GIs in Iraq. They needed things like foot powder and soap. We took collections. Whenever we took up a collection, we were overwhelmed with the donations of our members. I think overall in all, we did a great job as, a, as an organization in Burlington. Um, it's a shame that people, the current generation, are not interested in joining fraternal lodges. But if you think back to why lodges, fraternal lodges were founded in the first place, it's because of immigration, people coming to this country. They want to be with people like themselves they could talk with them. Well, anyway, over the years, with intermarriages, the Irish marry the Italians, the Italians marry the Irish. There's no need to fight anymore. And, well, here we are today. People don't need fraternal lodges. And we took our toll. So anyway, our swan song is, as Pat says, is to let everybody in Burlington know, especially you selectmen, that we were a very major contributing factor to the well-being of the town and if it gets some, some kind of recognition, it would be very much appreciated. We're not asking much, maybe just a pat on the back. Well, I hope tonight we can do a little bit more than a pat on the back. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I believe, one of the uh, lucky students who received a Sons of Italy uh, scholarship back in the day. Um, and your, your efforts over the years have not gone unnoticed. Um, and there, your, your organization has touched many lives of Burlington residents and will not soon be forgotten. Um, Jim, before you uh, read that, uh, any questions for, for uh, the gentleman or any comments from the board? Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for 52 years of uh, wonderful contributions to the town. Uh, this year, I've been fortunate enough this school year to host uh, two exchange students, and one is from Italy. He's from Milan. So I've gotten my own personal look into Italian culture, and it's been wonderful. So I just wanted to say personally thank you to you gentlemen and everyone involved for 52 wonderful years. Thank you. Can, I, I, I just wanted to, I, I thought it was interesting. Don and I have 122 years as citizens of Burlington, which I think is a little bit good. 120 years of helping Burlington one way or another, I think, I think is significant. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I just want to say thank you very much for you know, all your donations to the town and the 52 years of having the Italian um, society help out with everything that's going on in town. So thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. You're it. welcome. Jim, take it away. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the proclamation <clears throat> reads as follows. Whereas the Sons of Italy of Burlington has been a steadfast and productive group within the town of Burlington for the past two, 52 years, with a sustained membership of 80 to 90% of Burlington residents and members who participated in town government over the years, including participation in the Burlington 4th of July parade with several first place floats. And whereas the Sons of Italy of Burlington has held much representation in the Grand Lodge for state activities, both a president and vice president who became instrumental in Grand Lodge planning and activities for 20 years, the conception and support of a junior lodge for two plus years, as well as much charitable giving through the Grand Lodge to needy Boston charities. And whereas the Sons of Italy of Burlington has been a very charitable organization with many charitable Christmas efforts through St. Margaret's Church to needy families within the town and also helping with rental contributions to senior citizens of Burlington. And 
Whereas the Sons of Italy has been an, an ally to our military and have sent support and personal hygiene needs overseas to the military for many years, and they also help to support homeless veterans with yearly donations to the New England Center and, and Home for Veterans, and whereas the Sons of Italy has always made education a priority by establishing a scholarship fund from inception and continuously replenishing it for 52 years, as well as the creation of the President's personal high school scholarship fund, an education of their Italian heritage has also been a priority by supporting a sixth level Italian language class with college professors. They have also maintained a culture series at the Burlington Library and have appeared numerous times on BCAT discussing aspects and giving an introduction of Italian culture. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the select board, we would like to recognize and acknowledge all that the Sons of Italy has done for the town of Burlington over the years and thank them for their tremendous generosity and support. Signed by the select board. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make one last comment? Absolutely. Yes. As president, I get all the glory for the last 20 years. Thank you so much. But Pat did all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Pat, you missed that. Thank you. <laughs> you missed that. <laughs> Pat, you missed that. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I said no, I get all the. You made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I said I, I, did, I get all the glory, but you did all the work. I just let you know that. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> get bello, mamma mia. <laughs> we'll see you, Pat. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, folks. Next up, we have item 77, the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Mr. Kuna, come on down. Bob, it's good to see you. Great to see, great to see all of you. Thank you. Take it away. Uh, I hate that this is a recurring theme, but thank you for the opportunity to come in front of this board uh, and ask for your approval. Uh, we have been un unlucky 13, actually 12 times. This is hopefully lucky 13, but let me restart that sentence. So we've been unlucky 12 previous times submitting to the MSBA for um, reimbursements or improvements to the Burlington High School. Uh, like I said, hopefully this is that year that it happens. Uh, as a requirement for submitting a statement of interest, it is required that only the school committee, but also the select board, uh, read the passage that's in front of you. Uh, and then obviously I have to submit that on behalf of you all to the um, Massachusetts School Building Authority. Um, again, I just want to thank you for your continued support on this. And you know, I think at some point uh, we do need to do something with the high school but I would like to get some of the state's money to help us as well. So again, thank you for your support. Understood. Uh, gentlemen, questions, comments? Joe, you want to start? i say. <laughs> We're still there. <laughs> keep going at it. Just keep going and going and going. I think we'll always support this. Can't see any reason not to. Mm -hmm. but... Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, Selectman uh, Espeo and I toured the high school a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was an eye opener. That was me, and... right? It was me. Oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I see how it is. I was viewed with the uh, library. Oh, sorry. I see how it is. The yeah, priest and I. Problem, James. <laughs> I feel like Joe. <laughs> um, Selectman Priest and I toured the high school, and it was an eye opener. Um, both the the physical structure, but the, the students themselves, and some of the classrooms. Um, the welcoming classroom is phenomenal. It's just, it's an amazing place. Um, we were both commenting on when, um, well, when I was here, it was red paint. When I was here 20 years ago, it was painted red. I said, well, I was here 40 years ago, it was painted yellow. So uh, it's actually kind of ironic that we both went to the school and uh, still standing. We still haven't found the pool yet, but yeah. uh, we did um, we did tour the building and appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. the school department's uh, invitation to do that. But yeah. that's all. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, Hopefully it is lucky 13. I know uh, we've taken a couple swings at this. Hopefully with the, um, now that we're working with the MSBA on the Fox Hill project, 
well, maybe would we were we able to like pick their brains and find out where we were missing the ball in the last 12 times? Maybe in, maybe help us on our 13th go at this. Um, so I think there's two problems, right? Off record, MSBA is never going to comment and say where we fell fully short. But I think the problem is is that we keep good care of our buildings, right? So there's always worse buildings that need more money than ours, uh, and I think we just have too much pride to let the building you know, run it to the ground. So that being said, um, it really comes down to the fact that, like I said, that there's not enough money to go around for all the schools and all the towns that are submitting uh, to the MSBA. The other thing is that projects have gone up in cost lately. So now whatever money they do have, there's less to spread around because the projects cost more. Additionally, um, they removed one of their key components, which is the accelerated repair. Um, so now there's really only core programs to apply for funding from, right? So instead of uh, schools that just need a roof or just need a boiler, that's taken off the plate for this year and only a core repair is available to submit for. So there's just not enough money to go around. See, just one more question out of curiosity. My personal belief is that we need a new high school as opposed to renovation. When you, we do this application, do you specify which way you want to go or do you just put in Burlington as an applicant and they tell us yes or no and we'll fund this or that's part of the study? That's a great question. Um, it's requirement. So regardless of, even if you say we want to do a new building, you're required to do an addition, addition renovation, uh, and a new building study, no matter what. So once you have your OPM and your uh, designer on board, the requirement is that they study all three of those. They also have to study new sites as well, even if we don't have new sites, right? To see if there are any other new sites available in town that we could use to put a building on. Thank you, Bob. Good luck. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Uh, I had a question, I lost it. Uh, so that, that's what it was. Bob, does, I feel like we've, we've, I've asked this question before, I've just forgotten the answer. Um, should we get funding from the MSBA, does this trigger all of the ADA requirement changes that go along with work? Like would a project this size create more work or does, does that include, is that included in this? Um, I would say hopefully it does trigger everything and yeah. either we would bring the whole building up to scale um, up to code or also, you know, replace that building as well. Um, but regardless of, uh, in the finding during the study, if we are selected for funding, um, they would give us recommendations and then we would then have to come back to the town anyways to either request or appropriate funding to move forward with whatever design that we choose. Right, right, okay. All right, um, I know we have a, a lengthy a motion to read here. I don't know which one of you is game to do it. <laughs> Uh, Mike, okay. Uh, well, then, if there are no further questions, then Mike, by all means, go ahead and make that motion. Oh, just make the motion, motion please. You want to... Just one request, please. I'm sorry. Um, there's a date in here. Um, if we could just note that as 327, today's date, um, because when we submit, um, pull this down from the MSBA, that's the date that we pulled it down from. But you're reading it into the record on today's date. Do you on want... both of them? In the first sentence. Yeah, on 327. Both dates. Yeah, so the, the, so the document form is 314, okay. but you're reading okay. it in on 327. Okay. So then just to clarify, just so the, first the first one is the only one that gets changed to 327. Uh, yeah. Correct. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, so resolved. Having convened an open meeting on March 27, 2023, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the Select Board of Burlington, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the Statement of Interest Form, dated 3-14-23, for the Burlington High School located at 123 Cambridge Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority number three, prevention of loss accreditation. Priority number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems, such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. And priority number seven, replacement of or in addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide a full range of programs consistent with the state and approved local requirements and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to be filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. Okay, motion been made and seconded. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Four zero zero. Thank you all. Good luck, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Lucky number thirteen. Here we go. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, we've got an alteration of premises for a uh, public hearing, uh, Common Craft, 75 uh, Burlington Mall Road. This is item number 78. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the public. Yeah. Oh. And Larry's online. He's online, great. Yep. Uh, I thought I saw him there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Um, just going to need a uh, motion and vote uh, to approve the advertisement as it was uh, ad advertised. <laughs> so moved. Second. Okay, motion's been uh, moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay, public hearing is open. Uh, to the proponent. Good evening. Uh, take it away. What's uh, we got an alteration of premises? Tell us what's uh, what you're looking for. Great. Uh, so looking to um, expand the the um, the patio area into the green space, which will be a fencing around the perimeter of the uh, fake turf that's uh, currently there, and will connect into our existing patio, which will be a uh, larger space to activate with um, outdoor games and uh, lounge seats, as well as um, some uh, tables and chairs. Two alcohol subcommittee. Gentlemen, want to go first, Mike? Go ahead. Hello, how are you? So, um, from what we see on the plan here, this is basically what you're doing is putting a couple cornhole uh, boards out there, and, and that is proceeding to it. That's it for what you already have. Just going to be in a small addition to this. Uh, correct. So, so it'll be it'll be a mobile uh, it'll be a mobile configured setup where it'll there will be. Um, there will be a cornhole set up or other lawn games. We'll move some of the tables around. We'll continue to do our um, our uh, themed events uh, throughout the um, spring and summer, as we did last year, with um, uh, light entertainment and um, and uh, food and beverage. And it's a and seasonal it's a season. thing, right? Are you going to put heated? Uh, you're not going to put heated yeah. seats out there later on, right? In the no, 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 correct. So it'll uh, it'll be it'll be accessible. Um, it'll be accessible as as long as the uh, weather permits. Okay. All right, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Um, just quick question on the patio. Will you only be able to access access that through the building? I see a couple of gates on the side here. You're not going to be able to come in from the side or anything, are you? No, no, there's no there. For uh, for us to be able to access the green space with any any installation that we add, or um, or uh, you know equipment for a band, for example, or um, and then also access um, for uh, patrons to uh, to exit. Okay, thank you, okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Jim. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, just, I think it's a nice creative idea again, trying to enlighten, uh, getting the mall back to you know li livening up the mall and giving more choices and options for, for people who uh, go down there. So I think it's a great creative idea. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. agree. Um, so this this green space, this is... Uh, is, is expanding uh, with you? Uh, correct. So, um, so uh, they extended my lease um, at, at no fee uh, just because they thought that, um, and I agree that, that that Common Craft will be a better steward of the space uh, to activate it. Um, I think it, the original intention was that they would do some activations, but um, with um, with our pilot test of last summer, through your help of giving the special permits for the themed events, we were able to display, show, and prove that um, that we can make it um, a very um, energetic, uh, energetic space, and uh, through the theme events, create more texture, uh, energy, and, and appeal to that that area of the mall. Okay, Joe, you have something else? No, just uh, so we all on the same page. You're just rearranging. So there's gonna be no no added seats to this, right? No added seats to this. Just no, rearranging no stuff around, seats. basically. No added seats. We will just take our our um, we will take our allotted seats for uh, capacity to uh, to rearrange from indoor to outdoor, uh, keeping to um, keeping to our ratio. That's great. Thank you. That's it. 
Yeah, no, of course. Them out, uh, do something better. Right, but their but their standing room capacity is increased, right. obviously. Right. Um, Larry, actually, do you know how many like with with this space? Do you know how many folks you can safely fit in that in that space? Like, what's your what's your standing capacity going to increase to? Increase to. Well, so our, our standard capacity will still be at 233, uh, but we're shifting from, I think, 32 uh, patio seats to 54. All right, very All right, good. Very good. Um, and Lynn Paul, this one, is... One more question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, will this area be strictly controlled by the restaurant? I'm not shouldn't say, use that term. Will people be able to rent out this area or hold a fundraiser in this area and have it all to themselves? Mm, unclear right now. Uh, we've we've typically not used outdoor patio space for any private events just because we can't control weather patterns. So there's been tremendous amount of of appeal for just event space to be on our existing patio, and we've turned them down simply because we don't have a contingency plan. So I would say I would say no. However, I'm not prepared to 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 stand on those words. <laughs> Who's the politician over yeah. there? Yeah, I was <laughs> come to the right place. <laughs> okay. Um, Lynn Paul, from a paperwork standpoint, or anything else, Paul, you want to add? We're looking good. Not Mr. Chairman, all the paperwork's in order. Very good. All right. Um, this is a public hearing, so I'm going to go ahead and open it to the public. If anybody wants to make comment, um, this is this is your time to shine. Mr. Chairman, as you know, nobody's hands up in the screen or here at the audience, so I'll make a motion to close public hearing. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It's 400 to close public hearing. So public hearing will make closed. Closed. Oh. I was just going to say if there's any other comments or questions from the board, but if, if seeing none, then uh, Joe, take it away. I'll make a, a motion to, to uh, approve the alterations of premises, Coleman Craft, 75 Burlington Mall Road, as printed. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. 4 0 0. Larry, you're all set. Good luck. Great. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. All right, next up, we have another public hearing. Uh, change of corporate name, uh, Pledge of Collateral and DBA for, uh, I guess this is for Strega, right? As, as the parent company. Um, in any case, I will go ahead and open public hearing. I uh, just need a motion to accept the advertisement. So moved. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 400 for the advertisement. Public hearing is open. It's very exciting stuff. Uh, to the proponent, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here this evening. The floor is yours. Tell us what uh, what's happening tonight. Great. Well, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Attorney Trish Bosworth on behalf of the uh, licensee and with me um, also via uh, video is Kim Dinsmore, the uh, Executive Vice President of Operations for PPX Hospitality. So I know this has been long drawn out. You know, you guys were very patient with the Del Frisco's and uh, them closing. And then last year we appeared I think in April, and it was finally approved on July by the ABCC to transfer from Del Frisco's to Strega Burlington LLC. And um, it was determined that uh, it may make sense to brand it as a Smith & Walensky as opposed to a Strega. PPX Hospitality, um, just to remind you, owns three different um, lines of restaurants here in the Commonwealth is Smith & Walensky, the Strega, and the Legal Seafoods. So they're going to put a Smith & Walensky in this spot. Um, and it was really just a simple change of corporate name. So Strega Burlington LLC is now called Smith & Walensky Burlington LLC, and a change of DBA the same from Strega Italiano to uh, Smith & Walensky. Okay. Uh, Ms. Dinsmore, anything you want to add? Okay. okay. Uh, Paul, anything on this? Change of paperwork, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I believe all the documents are in order, and uh, this should be ready to go. Uh, probably, I'm sure your question is, when is it going to open? And, uh, <laughs> it's always one of our questions, absolutely. <laughs> We are we are very optimistic that we'll open by May tenth. 
attempt. Okay. Yeah, we'll do a, a couple friends and family type of things uh, prior to that, and then that would be our opening to the public. All right. Well, we're not family, so I hope a friend. Of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, to the board. Um, um, Joe, you want to start? Want to start? Sure. This is uh, kind of a no-brainer. We've waited this long for it to come in, and now they're starting to get the paperwork done with the change of the name and everything else going on. So I see no reason not to put this through. Like we're all waiting patiently. <laughs> Very patient. <laughs> right. Right. We're gonna we're gonna hold it up now. <laughs> Uh, no comment, just uh, looking forward to checking it out. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jim. Nope. Simple name change, that's all it is. So. Yep. All right, this being a public hearing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn to the public. Anybody who would like to speak, please go ahead and raise your hand, or uh, in person or virtually, and uh, we'll call on you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, uh, seeing no one, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. For, uh, sorry, opposed? Abstain, four zero zero to close the public close hearing. Public, hearing. public hearing is closed. Uh, I assume the board doesn't want me any more comments, so I'm just going to go ahead and ask for a motion. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the change in corporate name um, from Strager Burlington LLC to Smith Wolinski Wolinski LLC. Second. Okay, motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Four zero zero. We'll hopefully see you on May tenth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. With all the uh, fun stuff out of the way, uh, we get to turn our wonderful attention to department budgets for FY 2024. Super exciting. Uh, oh, John, is, is Whitney joining us this evening? I see a WH up there. Yep, on the that's Whitney. Yeah, that's Whitney. Whitney in the virtual. I want to be as uh, presumptuous. Whitney, it's good to see you tonight, virtually, albeit. In a WH. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. I swear, I can hear you making fun of my butt again. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's making fun? Fun. We appreciate everything you do. Okay, so apologies for not being there in person. Um, hopefully this can go pretty smoothly. Can we start with building, please, if Mark sure. is there? Did the bell come on down? So building, we're looking at an overall 3.59% increase. Um, the salary portion is 3.75. That is driven by contractual obligations and employees moving through steps. You'll see that the um, initial request from the department included the reinstatement of the additional inspector position that we had unfilled um, in response to the, the pandemic. Um, that request was caught after discussions with the administration and the department for this year, um, but just keeping that on the radar that going forward, uh, those needs are constantly being evaluated and that may be coming back up in the future. Um, expenses, we see a 1.06 increase. This is a minor increase, which is driven basically by the cost of supplies for the printer, copier, scanner, plotter, specialized equipment for, for plans. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. So I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thanks Whitney. Uh, Mark, anything you wanna add or tell us about or floor is yours? No, I, I think Whitney covered it all. Um, but yeah, we're gonna keep that inspector in mind for future reference, but um, no, I'm fine with it, thank you. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions or Jim? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark, um, just curious, how's, how's activity, activity is it? Now that we're coming out of this endemic, I guess you could say, permits, inspections, are we increasing? Um, I would say they're holding steady. Um, if it feels a little slow, but it's not really. Um, I don't know how to summarize that, if that makes sense, but um, even though we've cut down on volume, um, it's, not, it's not below where we would ever be. So we were so we were so going so good for a couple of years there, um, then the pandemic, but we haven't got below that threshold. So we're busy, we're just not busy, busy. A follow up? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, we changed zoning a couple of years ago to allow for life sciences. How does does that how does that affect your department, if it if at all? 
the oh, life sciences. Well, most of the life sciences are going through the planning board for special permits and stuff like that for those different uses and if they're in the PDDs. But um, yeah, we, we, we inspect them a little bit differently. Um, when the new 10th building code comes out, it actually addressed laboratory use. Um, which never really was in there before, so there's a whole section on different requirements for laboratory use. But um, it seems to be the trend because almost everything that's coming in is, is life science use, so they're converting a lot of spaces to it. It's all set. Joe? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mark, I'm fine with the budget. I do have a question about it, though. Um, really not the budget, I guess, but anyway, uh, with the new life science buildings coming into town and everything happening in town, do our inspectors need to go back to school to learn like what their, what their process is now with this life science because of the chemicals and stuff they use and um, is it a different process for them now? There will be a different process and um, so we go to training once a month. They okay. Training and they, they bring up certain things. That's going to be like... For a while, it's all been on the energy code because, you know, switching over the energy yeah. codes. But next, the next phase is all going to be life science stuff. So it's a monthly meeting where they, they have somebody come out and teach us um, different things to look for and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just interested in it. That's all. Just trying to run it through my head how it all works. Cause... I, yeah, I didn't know if you were asking me if I had to go back to high school. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, if I'm not going back, I don't think anybody is. <laughs> I can't even spell high school. <laughs> Thank you. Mike? Um, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Mark, my question uh, has to do with the cyclical nightmare of how busy you are in correlation to um, level of enforcement of, you know, people n not doing things that are, you know, bylaw or otherwise related. Uh, do you feel like the staff has what they need? Do we need to make adjustments on our end in terms of staff or tools? Like, and, and how much time is that occupying from staff's, I guess, day, week, month? Um, so I have Marty, who, who's a, the senior inspector, who's, who's great and can take care of a lot of stuff. So as far as, as, far as non-conformance and, and violations of stuff we're building, that's all. He takes care of that. He takes care of all, all that out in the field and stuff. But when you want to get into zone, and pretty much I'm taking care of that, it, it takes up a lot of my time. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons for this this inspector that was cut during the pandemic that I wanted to bring back in was I was going to try and create just a zone and enforcement officer. He would stay out of the building code part and the inspection. He would just do site visits on complaints and, you know, be proactive on the sign enforcement and stuff like that. Okay. So we can always use more, yes. Right. No, I know. And I know that we're, all, we're always being cognizant of the budget and the growth of the budget and having overhead when it comes to staff, but um, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, gentlemen, anything else? Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll let you get a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, building inspector budget as presented. Second. Second. Okay, motion been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Thank you, Mark. Mark. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thanks. All right, Whitney, where are we going now? Can we go to accounting, please? We sure can. We sure can. Drilling is available. Accounting. So, accounting, we're looking at an overall 7.17% increase. Um, that is largely driven by the salary line here. The salary line is going up 7.25. Um, salaries are a major portion of this budget, um, so any salary increase really over impacts the overall percentage quite a bit. Um, in this case, the salary increase is driven by steps and contractual obligations, but um, specifically in this case, we have an accounting specialist position. Uh, there was a vacancy, one employee left to go to the schools, and uh, the person who filled that position came from the treasurer's department and uh, she was at a much higher step. So we sort of absorbed that higher step um, when, when that position was filled and uh, the expenses are level funded. So that's, that's about it in a nutshell. Okay. Julian, welcome. I thought this is you the first time in front of the board Julie. officially. <laughs> yes. uh, so it's great to see you. Uh, the floor is yours. A couple minutes, tell us how things have been going and I mean, number one, how you've been hopefully enjoying the role. Uh, it's, I've heard nothing but good things from Paul and John. Uh, 
but you know, give us give us a, a quick little overview from from your perspective. Uh, I think. Um, thank you so much, um, Mr. Chairman, and I enjoy the position so far. And John has been very supportive and helpful, and then everything is um, very organized. And as t uh, in terms of the budget, we we need covers it all. And happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Um, Gentlemen, questions. Mike, start with you. Um, no questions, Mr. Chairman. It's pretty straightforward. The increase. Okay. Thank you. Joe? Nope. You're doing a great job. Okay. We'll make it easier on no, you your no first questions. night. No questions from the, from the rest of the board. Uh, I have a question, because I'm a pain on the rear end. Um, I feel like this is the second, maybe, maybe second or third time we've talked about um, staff attrition to the schools. Um, and and that kind of gets, that kind of gets my, I don't know, hackles raised. Whatever, I don't know. I'm, I'm done with words today. It bugs me um, that, you know, we're, we're losing folks for basically equal type positions to one of our other departments. Um, do we, and I'm kind of looking at every, anybody and everybody in the room right now, do we, do we have a solution? Can we, is there a way we can keep people in the seats? Like what's, what do we have to do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it'd be a worthwhile conversation uh, with your counterparts on the school committee. So if, if that's what the board wishes to do, I'm sure we could get um, <clears throat> a small group, a subcommittee perhaps of this board and a subcommittee of the school committee to talk about it. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, something that exists in many towns, but there is a little bit of a disparity between uh, what positions are paid uh, for very similar roles. So um, it's... On, on the one hand, we hate to lose our employees over to the schools, uh, but at the same time, um, we feel grateful that we're not losing them outside of the organization and they're still within the overall town of Burlington uh, doing great work. But it is uh, something that's been a disparity for many years and uh, it, it's worth a discussion uh, as we move forward. Yeah, I think that that would be great if we could uh, work with the school committee and you know have, have that conversation at the start of that conversation. Uh, you know, hopefully it leads to somewhere positive. Mike, you want to say something? Yeah, I got another question, Mr. Chairman. I just thought of something. Uh, more of a, a, a general question. I've seen this a couple of times now with some of these budgets, I, and it's not a complaint. Um, I just, I see that um, a lot of times we're seeing that the expenses, a couple of have been level funded. And I would, this year I was expecting to see more increases in expenses because of inflation. How are we doing that? Are we cutting in other areas? Are we just being more budget, tightening the belt? or? Well, I'm just just like, curious on how that's working. Well, that's it's a good thing. I'm just curious. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, thank you, Mr. Spale. You may cue it up nicely for me there to cry about it again at a, a public meeting. But um, you know, this is the uh, at least every year since I've been here, you you hear me talk about when we do our budget presentation about how, and we ask every department to try to do more with less to try to get the same amount of stuff with the same amount of money. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, but we are we do take into account that with each department head and said if this is really going to hurt we can ask for an increase but um you know our budget is predominantly people and so that we want to make sure we have the people and we can pay the people and it that comes off the backs of the stuff if you will thank you thank what you're saying is they, they didn't raise the price of paper or paper clips they raised the price of food is what the uh... <laughs> all right um Anything else on the board? I'm all set. No? All right. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the uh, accounting budget as presented. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five, uh, four zero zero. Excuse me. All right. We're all set. Whitney. Oh, where are we going now? Sorry, she's not all set. Set. Uh, we, do, uh, we do audits next. Because audits. Thank you. Whitney, yeah. Whitney, I swear we're flipping the audits. I'm gonna undo it myself. Sorry, uh, it doesn't let me unmute myself, so. Can you hear me now? We can, yep, we got you now. Okay, so yeah, while Julian is still here, if we can do financial services, um, AKA audit, the, that is um, a 0% increase. We're, we're level funding it for this year. Uh, as you probably remember, this basically funds the town annual audit, um, as well as um, potentially any other targeted audits that we're looking to do throughout the course of the year. That's it. May I, may I add one thing? Yeah. So a few years ago, this was $80,000. 
um, and with the idea that we would start to spread around some targeted review of any department that handles money or has a process that we might want to look at. Uh, when uh, when came COVID around, came around, we, we, we trimmed it back to cover just the audit and then a little bit of money just in case. Um, so we think we get by again with that, but we may see a little bit of a request for an increase next year. Uh, so try to get back on board with some of that uh, targeted stuff. All right. Uh, gentlemen, any questions, comments? Yeah. No? No? Okay. Uh, all right, no, nothing else, and we can, I'll take a motion on that one. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the financial service services budget. So I go. Okay, motion been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. All right, now before I preemptively release Julian, she's good. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Excellent. Thank you. I did, I did it like five times in the last meeting. I, I, Brian and Rachel in the, you know, in the seats. All right, Wendy, where to? Uh, can we go to police, please? Sure can. Sure can. Chief, come on down. So for police, we're looking at an overall 1.94% increase. Um, that's a 0.36% salary increase. Again, driven by contractual obligations, employees moving through steps. Uh, but this year, that increase is a bit minimized by basically the effect of re retirements and replacements at, at lower levels. That's kind of offsetting um, that increase a bit. And then on the expense side, uh, you see a 25.51% increase. The major driver of, of the expense budget here is the contracted services and materials and supplies line. Um, contracted services this year includes a $50,000 increase for support, support and maintenance of the new um, CAD RMS system, um, as well as support costs for the new body worn cameras. Um, the materials and supplies includes a $50,000 increase for infrastructure as a service, um, which uh, the chief can correct me if I'm wrong, but my layman's understanding of that is basically its servers and networking so that the town and the police department can share um, information that should be shared effectively while sort of maintaining things that should be separate separately. Um, and then their special uh, accounts are level funded for this year. Okay. And I'll turn it back over to you. All right, Chief, the floor is yours. I have nothing to add. I'm happy to answer any questions. If I if I start to add anything, it'll take us in different directions. So I'll let you lead the conversation. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with any questions or comments from the board. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, just a question from my own curiosity. I see that we're having issues with the hybrid cruisers, and it's causing an increase in expense. What what's going on with them? I, I didn't know about this. I just want to know what's been going on with them. Are they just ineffective or bad tech? So I won't say they're ineffective. I think the problem is putting a hybrid cruiser into a line position has been um, less than what we had expected. Um, so we have hybrid cruisers that range from 2000, model year 2020 through 2022. We basically have four on the line. Um, out of those cruisers, we've lost a total of 108 shifts, which equates to 864 hours of repair time. Uh, one of those cruisers was down for eight days, another was down for three weeks, and they're identifying electrical issues in those cruisers. So when you take a new line cruiser out of the line and then you've got to rely on the older ones, you're obviously uh, taxing that older one um, to the point where we would have to cycle through some of the traffic cars in line operations. Um, so they didn't work out the way that we had hoped they would, uh, but at this point, um, it's kind of moot because we can't even get them if we wanted them. So we're going back to the gas powered. And we're not the only department that's had these. Uh, Ford has issued some recalls through central maintenance uh, to show some of the problems that other departments are having with them as well, so. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Joe? No, no questions at all. Okay. Jim? Uh, no, no questions. Yeah, I, I mean, Mike had my question, uh, you know, just how, how frustrating is it, you know, we, we try to make an effort to move towards something and then we're hit with nothing but recalls and issues, right. you know, out the wazoo. That's costing us time and, you know, police on the streets. Um, it just that infuriates me. And um, money. And, well, yeah, money, of course. Right. Can I make a quick comment after that? Yeah, go ahead. I, I was just thinking about that electric vehicle or 
hybrid, I'm t saying they run 24 seven. So it's, and when they're at a scene, they don't shut off. They have to keep it running. They have to power the lights. So I, now I can understand how uh, electrical or hybrid is probably not the best or most appropriate choice for emergency vehicles. At least that's what I'm thinking now because uh, it, it just there's a drain on. I mean, it, it, the drain on, went on the gas-powered vehicles. Mm. Never mind a, an electric or battery-operated powered vehicle, and it's just constantly being drained. So I just wanted to add that. Tap, did you want to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. Right. I'll stop tapping. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say something. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Paul. Oh. Mr. Chief, can I ask uh, John or the Chief just to sort of address what we've done with the mental health clinician over the past several years? Sure. You know, and, uh, that's been a hot topic for the board in terms of providing more service in that area, and, yeah. and we've attempted to do that uh, over the past couple years. So, so yes, uh, thank you. Um, so, Karen, as you know from last year, we uh, made her a full-time employee using um, 50 percent of the opera funds we're going to do that again this year which is reflected in the budget and each year she's been here um, she's she's helped out exponentially so for this year so far uh, she's she received 150 new referrals I'm sorry through 2022 which uh, was up from 119 in 2021 now the thing that uh, has to be stressed here is when she gets an outside referral this isn't something like an officer goes for let's say a, a a car crash or a smashed mailbox. This is something where she's invested in this follow-up, sometimes for months on end, uh, where she's allowing uh, herself to be uh, the conduit to other outside services. I know Christine is here, who's gonna be coming up before you. She's got a great relationship with fire department, youth and family services, the schools, Shawshin. Um, she's paid for herself time and time again. Um, she's also started to increase her co-response, so there are times which is limited by general orders in the department, but where she'll actually respond out um, with an officer inside of a cruiser. Uh, she's helping out with a, um, a hoarding situation right now where she's bridging the gap between uh, building and the Board of Health. So um, she's just paid dividends, and, and the, the co-response model is working very well. She's fit in. She's done a phenomenal job. That's great to hear. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> All right. Um... Chairman, if there's nothing else, we can we can put this to a vote. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, police budget as presented. So I can motion be made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, 0 All right. Thank you. Chief. Thanks, Chief. Whitney, where to? Where to? Can, can we go to fire next, please, Mr. Chair? You sure can. And just a side note is they're going to be doing EMS as well. So once we're going with fire, we can jump into EMS. So for fire, we're looking at a 5.76% increase. Um, the salary increase is 5.54%. This increase is driven by steps and contractual, contractual obligations. Um, also a major driver here is an increase in the overtime request. After discussion with the administration, that request was reduced somewhat, but it's still still a sizable increase, um, trying to right size that budget. On the expense side, we're looking at 11.36%. Um, in this case, the expense increase is driven largely by increases in contracted services and materials and supplies. So this sort of ties back to what you're talking about earlier, where we can, we try to level fund these expenses, but in some, um, instances, it's just not possible. Um, here, contracted services includes an increase for fire data management, which sort of ties back to the CAD RMS system that I was discussing with the police budget. This is an annual maintenance and support cost for the fire portion. Um, and then materials and supplies increase is driven mostly by gas and oil prices. And uh, the special accounts are level funded. And with that, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Whitney. Gentlemen, thanks for being here tonight. Uh, Chief, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I think she hit the nail on the head. Yep. They're all good at this. Huh? They're They're all good. Whitney, no. you're doing a great job. Whitney. <laughs> Whitney's nailing it tonight. <laughs> doing great, Whitney. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, to the board, gentlemen, questions, comments. Jim. Um, prepare yourself for 
town meeting because this overtime request is going to get a lot of uh, attention. Mm -hmm. Can you explain for the board here the, the reason why it has to be such a big increase? Uh, just going on uh, the history, um, we've had a lot of injuries. We still have a few, a couple of guys out injured. Um, and we have vacancies that we are unable to fill. Um, the last time we requested four positions and we only had three guys come in to sign the list. And out of those three, um, one of them ended up uh, withdrawing. So we still have two vacancies and I know, I have a feeling that we're gonna have difficulty filling the positions this year and we have six retirements coming up so between now and the end of uh september we'll, we have eight positions uh, that are going to be vacant um the good news is we did have four vacancies but we just brought on two quality candidates one of our dispatchers you guys appointed him uh, a couple months ago um he's doing well in the academy the other guy uh, already went through the academy, so he is uh, moving into a position where he's going to count towards the Manning sooner, um, so that was a good hire. Um, we also had um, a dispatcher leave, so with the dispatcher that was promoted to firefighter and dispatcher that left, uh, that left us with two vacancies at dispatcher position. So. Um, these positions uh, need to be filled on a daily basis where we operate at minimum staffing pretty much every day. Uh, it's not, um, it's, it's a rare occasion when we don't have someone in on overtime. So uh, we have vacancies, injuries, and then just everyone's normal use of their time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. May I add something to that? Just to just to add that this isn't something that's that's new. Uh, this is something we've been chasing every year and every year uh, for the two chiefs before uh, Chief Connery. That since I've been here, uh, it's been a it's a long process, and it's not just one thing. As Andy pointed out, it's it's injuries, it's vacancies, it's the structure. Um, it's something that's going to take us longer to fix than just this budget. Uh, but we need to do something. We can't continue to say stop having people get hurt. That hasn't worked. Uh, so we'll have to try a different tact now. Um, but when you when we go over the Warren articles, you'll see something that we're trying to do to offset it without putting pressure on the operating budget with taking some money from uh, uh, another source. Um, so it is. it has been a battle, and this year has been uh, the least of worst since I've been here. Um, but, you know, Andy's been looking at the data, and, um, you know, it isn't making sure that it really is what we think it is it's it's the, it's really those big hitters it's you know on top of everybody having time to take and you know you need to be able to take your time but injuries vacancies and just having the structure where they have to have a minimum um, amount on every shift for everybody's safety that just causes overtime every single day every shift thank you John. none of our none of our jobs are well ours is but these guys, you know, they're not desk jockeys. You know, they go out in the trucks and they're physically active, doing active work. And they, if they can't be 100%, then they're not, they're gonna hinder the operation as opposed to help. Right, um, no, I'm sorry, anyway. We have um, already requested a list. Uh, the, the list hasn't come out yet. It's coming out April 1st, but we're already in line for eight and um, you know, we hope that <clears throat> the town of Burlington, the fire department, is an attractive position, uh, attractive spot for guys to land. Um, we have lost guys to other municipalities that, you know, pay a little bit more, have a little, have, have a little bit more fire. Um, it's <coughs> and more opportunities for them to uh, move up. So, uh, but we are ahead, trying to get ahead of the game, you know, asking for eight, which if we get eight, that'll take us through um, the end of September. And, 
you know, we do have several members that any moment can say, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be retiring. So then we just back at it again. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Selectman Tickers kind of took my question. Just another question on top follow-up. Um, I know it seems like in every industry it's tough to find good people these days, and apparently it's no different in the, the fire. Is um, Are other municipalities also seeing this? Is it a common problem? Is there something we as a town can do better, or can we, uh, we as a board can do to help you guys, or what are, what are we doing to try? I mean, eight vacancies sounds like a lot. You know, what can we do to...? Um, well, we have some ideas that we need to... Um, talk with uh, the administration and the, the firefighters about um, just to make us more flexible in, in the hiring process. Um, it's not necessarily civil service. Um, Lexington is non-civil service and they're, they're having as much difficulty filling their seats as, as we are. It's um, The people that we just interviewed, um, not the Burlington kid, he just wanted to be in Burlington, but the other, the other kid, he, he was interviewing in several towns, and uh, we were fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have him stick with us, and, uh, you know, we, we have a, a good contract, good equipment, good stations, good people, so, um, you know, it, it's, it's an easy sell. It's just sometimes you can't get through to the um, to the candidates. You know they want to stay closer to home, or um, they have a buddy on a different department. So, you know we do our best to show them the the progressiveness that we are moving t towards. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I feel like we talked about this last year in terms of you know John to your point, kind of. Uh, just the culmination of things that have been kind of taking hits. My, my biggest concern is that, you know, we have these same guys picking up overtime, and then that increases their likelihood of getting injured, right, uh, which causes more guys to go out, and now we're, you know, just in this self-begotten cycle of, you know, kind of losing guys to working too much. Um, you know, but uh, fingers crossed for, the, for that list and, you know, that things go well. Um, obviously, I know you guys are working hard to, you know, make it happen, so I appreciate everything that, that you both are doing. Yeah. Um, all right, well, fingers crossed on this one, and I'm, I'm looking forward to you know, the uh, the Warren article to help kind of lessen the lessen the burden there, John. So when we get to that, um, all right. Um, if there are no further questions, we can take fire as a as a vote. Someone let's make a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve the fire department uh, budget as presented. Second. A okay, motion been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. All right, on to EMS. Okay, so EMS is a funded for this year. Um, just a little background the pressure. This department is responsible for planning, coordinating, training, um, and preparing grant applications for emergency management purposes. Um, the assistant chief basically serves as the deputy director of the EMS, um, and as I said, level funded for this year. Turn it back over to you. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, questions, gentlemen? Yeah. Chief, anything you want to add? No. Nope. Uh, level funded. Um, we just do the same thing that we did last year. Just uh, plan and prepare. With All right. All right, uh, gentlemen, no other questions, go ahead. I'll make a uh, motion that we approve the emergency management uh, position, uh, uh, emergency management, uh, emergency management budget is presented. Thank you. man. Well, <laughs> EMS, I get a little confused because EMS is also emergency medical services. It's also what else I wanted to find So I want to make sure I said the right thing, but I obviously didn't, so. It's all right. second the anyways. <laughs> Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. Zero, zero. Just give me Joe's name, Jack. Just give me. <laughs> Why do you want four beer to the bus? I'm sitting there very quietly today. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.
All right, Whitney, where to? Can we go to Youth and Family Services next, please? Sure can. Available. Um, apologies, I don't think that is on your outline cover sheet for tonight as we moved it around a couple of times. So I will follow up with you with the notes on that so you have a full set. Um, youth and Family Services, we're looking at an overall 3.68% increase. Um, that has a salary increase of 1.34. Um, which again is employees moving through steps and contractual obligations. Uh, most of the employees in this department are A and P, so those are budgeted. Uh, sorry, A and P is administrative and professional. Um, so those are budgeted at FY23 rates for now, and any increases uh, would be covered in the negotiated settlements budget. The expenses are increasing 50.71%. Um, again, this is a department that has a small expense budget overall, so um, any increase sort of leads to a large percent increase. Um, in this case, that increase is driven mostly by the cost of the interface referral service, which um, I won't botch by trying to explain anymore. I'm sure Christine can explain in further detail. And I think that's about it for the 10,000 foot view. I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Whitney. Christine, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Anything you want to add, add or elaborate on? Well, I'm going to attempt to elaborate on the, oh, inter no. on the interface um, mm -hmm. piece of things. We basically split the cost for that service. Okay. And for those who don't know about interface, it's um, it's a uh, it's an organization basically for uh, mental health services. Anybody living in Burlington can reach out and access mental health resources through them. So That's great. Sorry that your voice is. Sorry. Gosh, I wish I had known. I wouldn't have been like talking. No, 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 please. It's okay. Well, let's don't ask for any questions. Yeah, so there's no, no questions for Christine tonight. That's just. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think we're a whole lot of questions. Save, save your voice. Uh, Paul, is there anything you want to add? I would just ask, maybe John could cover it too, but this is also one of the areas that the board um, has helped us supplement uh, services with the ARPA funds uh, to help the department work through the backlog that was created. Um, by COVID, so um, I don't know. I, I did not ask Christine to talk, but I don't know if John <coughs> just want to speak well, on it a little bit. I um, had a voice just like that for the last <laughs> week that these guys had to put up with, but um, so it's same thing as the police. We've targeted some money directly toward uh, mental health <coughs> backlog from the pandemic, and we're doing it again this year. Our, our plan was to do that for two years so we could take a uh, take a look and see if this is something that's going to be a continuing need or was it truly just a backlog i think in both cases what we're hearing from the police and from the folks at youth and family services is that this probably is something that's going to be needed going forward uh, so you may hear from us next year come budget time that we need to uh increase those resources yeah yeah this is this is definitely I mean, in terms of mental health uh you know um definitely have questions and, and want to hear more but please save your voice and, and, and rest up and we can talk at different time um, all right gentlemen um, someone give me a motion let's let's get Christine out of here <laughs> make a motion we approve youth <coughs> services budget as presented second motion has been made and second all those in favor aye, aye. opposed abstain aye three zero one thank you very thank much you, thank you feel better thanks <coughs> All right, Whitney, where are we going? Can we go to town administrator select board, please? Sure can. So for um, town administrator select board, we're looking at an overall 3.75% increase. Um, the salaries here are going up 3.15%. Um, and that, again, is just driven by the contractual obligations and employees moving through steps. The expense budget is increasing 8.61%. Uh, most of this increase is driven by the economic development needs. Um, so we basically, what, what you'll see in your budget is we've grouped together all of the economic development expenses into that uh, materials and supplies group. Even though some things aren't necessarily materials and supplies, we wanted to uh, keep everything together so that we could track it properly. Um, so last year, some of these expenses were able to be offset by a grant. This year, we don't 
have that grant. So after discussion with the administration, the initial request um, was reduced a little bit to the amount that's presented before you tonight. Um, again, this function is still relatively new, so we're working to refine operations and make sure this budget is right sized, but this these expenses sort of fund uh, critical, critical initiatives uh, like the Bring Me to Burlington communication and promotion plan, um, which is made up of like the website, the social media presence, other other outreach, which I think has been exceptionally successful so far. Um, and on the special accounts, we're level funded. With that, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Whitney. All right, Paul, uh, John, anything you guys want to add? I just had uh, one thing that with the ED budget, as Whitney said, we were trying to figure out um, how much resources we need to dedicate to that every year. I think any resources we dedicate to, to Melissa is going to have a high rate of return. She could spend all of it if we give it to her and, and uh, would be perfect for us. Um, but we think we're, we're at the sweet spot now. About that $50,000 seems to be what she thinks she can operate on, plus she'll get money from other resources. We all know she's the rainmaker. And that was sort of a three-year process for us. So FY21, we were at 20000 and we tried to grow it. We did grow it three, about $10,000 a year uh, each year. So I don't anticipate that we'll have another jump like that again next year, but who knows with, you know, that department. Yeah, that's fair. We don't want to miss out. <clears throat> All right, um, gentlemen, anything? Just want to, real quickly, um, I, I can understand the uh, increase from economic development, but when you offset it with the amount of grant money that she brings in, it's, it's, neg you know, it's, it's negligible compared to what she brings in. So she does a great job bringing a lot of money in. Agreed. Joe, Mike, anything? Nothing. All right. Um, I'll actually a motion on this one. I make a motion to approve the uh, town administrator slash select board budget as presented. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. All right. Whitney. Okay, so can we finish up with town meeting and reports, please? We sure can. This should be a pretty simple one. Um, it's a zero percent increase, level funded. This budget covers the cost of town meeting. Um, annual reports, the warrants and backup, budget documents, and any other expenses related to town meeting. Again, level funded for this year. And that's all I have. Excellent. Joe, any questions for this one? It's level funded. Nope. Yeah. I know that um, Amy went through a lot of, with the, all the hybrid meeting uh, work that she was doing and uh, I feel like if, if the state or the, the town wind up supporting that moving forward, that this might increase from, from level funding to finding a way to support that. I don't know, Paul, if there's anything you want to say on that. Yeah, without a question, Mr. Chairman, uh, if, if for some reason there would be a change to sort of the in-person format of town meeting, uh, it would, it, there would be some significant additional costs. I'm not saying that's the right thing or the wrong thing to do, but we, we need to prepare for that. Um, there's a major undertaking that... Uh, Amy and Bill and, and the whole tech team put in to put on those hybrid meetings and um, we'll have to um, invest in something um, a little bit more technological and um, just so that it, to ensure the meeting goes smooth, smoothly. So. Absolutely. I might put as much duct tape on a plane before it's no longer able to fly. <laughs> there was a lot of individual efforts that went into making those uh, meetings successful. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, Okay. If there's not, nothing further on this, gentlemen, a motion, please. Make motion to approve the top <coughs> town meeting and reports budget as presented. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Yeah. Whitney, once again, thank you very much. What, John? <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, just to set the expectation at the next meeting, we still have some accommodated accounts to go over, and we'll probably try to do the capital. Uh, warrant articles at meeting two, and then on the second meeting, we'll do the rest of the, if the board wishes to take a position on uh, the rest of the warrant articles uh, at that meeting. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you again, all your work. Thank your you. hard work is very much recognized and appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Good night. Good night. Thank you, Whitney.
because because right there is another rock star of of this team. Uh, she, Whitney is, is absolutely incredible, and everything she does is. is I mean, I, I I know this board very much appreciates everything that she does. Uh, all right, next up. <laughs> I thought she left. <laughs> See, and I said that and I thought you were gone. So. <laughs> Girl, Whitney. <laughs> oh, Whitney, thank you. <laughs> All right, we got uh, item 81. Uh, this, this is a uh, Maytown meeting warrant articles. John, you leading this or Paul? Who's, who's taking no, it? I'll just say, Mr. Chairman, this is the. Uh the agenda item where the board votes to add all these uh, warrant articles on to create the warrant. Uh, once you take your vote tonight, uh, Lynn will be able to distribute this to all the committees as sort of the official list of potential warrant articles going forward. Uh, as John indicated, we'll still have two uh, meetings in April to actually go through uh, warrant articles and present and ask the board if they wish to take in a, a, a a position on any of them, uh, but this is simply uh, the vote to actually add all the articles on to create the warrant. And just to point out, um, Lynn had left you an updated list in front of you, and she'll update the, the backup materials uh, tomorrow. There was a slight change from what was in the packet. So. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. John, anything you want to add? Uh, no, that just do. I just want to point out what Paul already said. There was one additional article that wasn't on the one for the backup, but it is on this one. Okay. Uh, at a glance, I didn't see anything on here that I was like, oh gosh, no, that can't be included. Uh, I am curious about what firebird netting is, though. That that one caught my eye. I'm just, I mean, I know we'll get into it, but just I'm calling it out as something you don't typically see. That's a fun one to talk about. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the popcorn. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, uh, a motion to include everything in front of us on the warrant. Uh, so if there's something on here that you feel should not be included, uh, speak now and forever hold your peace. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion uh, we approve the index of warrant articles for the Maytown meeting. Second. All right, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. 4 zero, zero. Check that box. All right, next up, uh, item 82, discussion for government review. Uh, we've been kind of circling the, uh, I don't want to say drain, that makes it sound like a bad thing. Uh, we've been circling uh, on this one uh, for a while, having some conversations around, uh, you know, subcommittees that this board oversees in terms of efficiency. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, when you use the words government and efficient in the same sentence, people kind of balk at the idea, right, you want to have this notion of checks and balances, but I think that, uh, over the last at least decade, we've seen uh, areas of opportunity where there can be greater efficiency uh, through a variety of means. Uh, now, what those means are, I don't exactly know. And I think that um, it would be wrong of one individual board to try and uh, assume what is needed moving forward. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of officially open the conversation to say, as a board, what are, what are we thinking? What are we feeling, right? Uh, you know, I think that, you know, I mean, we, we all at different time have, have talked about inefficiencies that have occurred. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, at times assigned authority uh, over to Paul to avoid, you know, having to, you know, create, I guess, uh, a manual redundancy of things that, you know, just need to happen in a more timely manner. Uh, you know, I, I know that at other meetings we, we've said, uh, you know, geez, maybe it's just a, a change from town administrator to town manager. But at the end of the day, I, do, I don't know what that answer is. Um, myself and select board member Runyon, who's also, you know, kind of been really th thinking about this, uh, had a call, was it last week, Paul? With Probably two weeks ago. Two now, weeks ago. Yeah. Time is just, man. Uh, with, with Paul and uh, with town council, Lisa Mead, to kind of discuss, you know, what what would need to happen if we wanted to make this a, a bigger conversation. Now, obviously, uh, you know, I kind of have a thought in my mind in terms of, uh, you know, before the before. But you know, at the end of the day, what she was, what you know, was uh, I don't want to say recommended, but you know, what was talked about was, uh, you know, doing a charter commission and really kind of just taking a big step back and having the conversation. 
uh, you know, as a community as to what, you know, the, the, the town needs and might need in the future. Uh, requirements around that would mean that uh, it's, a, it's a petition, so that this board would uh, petition the town, the community. Uh, we would need 15% of uh, the uh, voting, uh, or should say registered voters, uh, to then have it, have the uh, boy oh boy words and me are not working today to have it placed on a, a ballot for the community to decide whether or not we want to engage in a charter commission. And at the end of the day, a charter commission really is meant to look at the charter in its entirety, to look at our special act, to look at our form of government, to say, is this still working, right? And the answer might be yes. It might it might mean just small changes, right? And by small changes, you know, it, I I kind of view town administrative to uh, town manager as a, as a fairly small change in the grand scheme of things, um, and that's just my myopic view. But um, I think there's, there's opportunity for us to talk about it now, and I think that if that's the direction that we want to move in, that you know between now and whatever timeline we think that we need to establish, again, if that's the the case, uh, that we yank uh, pull in as many folks, uh, you know, through boards and committees and town meeting. To kind of have discussions with us over, you know, a lot of period of time, uh, to kind of just really understand where we're all sitting on this, um, you know, even though we'd be the board to, uh, you know, I guess exercise authority in the in in the um, in the starting of this, um, you know, I'd want to kind of have that 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 broader conversation. Um, so with that being said, I want to stop talking and, and turn it to you, you gents, and get your thoughts and feelings and, you know, kind of how we've all been uh, individually experiencing this over the last few years. Anybody want to start? I oh, will, oh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. It does have to be a variety of people involved um, because we don't want, you know, we want to try to get an offer to as many people as possible by, while keeping it reasonable. So we definitely need several points of view from all different areas, from the committees, from town meeting. And so I, I do think that is the way to go forward. But again, that's a long you know, process to get everybody together and get the committee formed. But it should definitely be a mixed group, a group of people. Agreed. Agreed. Joe, Mike? No comment at all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Didn't we discuss talking about, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, taking the, the findings of the last governmental review committee and starting there as a starting point? I think that's a good place to start. Um, I do think that we have to take a look at the structure of our government, and it can be more efficient. I'd like to see, I don't know if this is part of the charter commission you're talking about, but maybe a third party, like the Collins Center, someone take a look at our overall uh, government, how it works and where we are doing well, where we're falling down on the job, where we could be better. So I think uh, an independent third party to look at um, our structure, uh, I think, would be a huge help. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I, I should have actually uh, said that I, I had reached out to, um, I harassed Gary Giannino because I figured he would have had it, uh, and he did. Uh, the original slide deck uh, from that uh, first government review from five years ago. Um, and this was one of the recommendations. And I do owe that to you, uh, and to have that, you know, uh, resubmitted in a public record for the sake of... Uh, posterity, but uh, it was that it was that the the treasurer collector, it was um, the town clerk, right? Were were you know considerations for either moving from elected to appointed, or you know having a review. Uh, but I think it's important to note that uh, I guess the the reason that right now at this particular juncture I'm considering the notion of uh, of a charter commission is that we'd be erring on the side of involving people, right? Is that you know, no one particular board would be making those decisions. It would have to be an elected body. Uh, I think uh, Lisa said nine people is a, is a standard charter commission makeup. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, so, so, you know, if, say, say you wanted to do it, you would have to step down from your current position and then run to be elected into the charter commission, right? So uh, the community would, would also pick who would be on the charter commission as well. Uh, as opposed to, you know, it being appointed by one particular body. It's a nine-position elected board? I think, so I, I think, I want to say I've seen them bigger, uh, but I think that nine is like the base number you start with. So, um, I mean, if, you know, I don't want to usurp the discussion, but I mean, if we want to continue the conversation, you know, I'm happy to begin shepherding that. 
uh, and, and see where it goes. It, it might go nowhere, right? Like people might be like, no, what, what we, we feel like what we have is fine. Um, you know, but uh, after four years of being on this side of the table, right, I feel like there are definitely areas of opportunity where we can, you know, find uh, ways to create efficiency, right? And I think that at the, at the rate that we're growing as a community, and I don't mean like development-wise, but I mean, you know, general progress and advancement, uh, you know, we don't want to miss out on opportunities because we have to wait, you know, for certain particular things. Now, I also say that, understand that we want to wait because checks and balances are important when it comes to government. So, you know, I'm kind of playing both sides of the coin uh, when, I, when I say that. Um, I don't know, Adam, are you, are you here for this? Did you want to? I actually came for the, uh, the warrants, but oh. uh, because this is interesting, I didn't stick around. <laughs> Well, as well, a, listening, but no, I have nothing that I want. All right. Yeah, I mean, as a town meeting member and, you know, because you're the only person here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'd, I'd turn to the audience and just see if you wanted to, I don't know, join us in the conversation. No, this is, this is an interesting conversation, and I, I support your endeavor to continue with it. And it, be, it would be a good opportunity if you told me maybe that I'd be interested in certain on, but I'm just interested in Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Chairman. I was going to say, yeah, you, you heard it here first. Adam, uh, Fully admitted to, to wanting to be chair of whatever committee we put together. I just think, Mr. Chairman, uh, a, a nine-person elected body for a charter commission would be kind of a tough thing to fill, right? Most of our most of our races are uncontested um, this Saturday. Um, that's why I was airing more on like an independent group to look at at first, at least. So then we'd have a baseline. We could have this independent group look at our government, and say, "Hey, you guys are doing great. You know, look at look at Burlington." But I mean, to just go for a, I mean, a nine member, I mean, would it be a couple year term? Probably. Uh, yeah, it's for, for whatever the duration length is, and, and we would set that. So like, I think it was uh, Auburn, did, there's it like 18 months, right? So that's the length of the term, that's when the report gets finished. You know, you're, you're set to a hard deadline. It, it can't run, you know, for five years. Um, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I think filling seats is a huge problem. And, you know, maybe, you know, to your point, step one, right, or step point five is, uh, you know, continue this conversation, uh, maybe ask the Collin Center to come in for, for their two cents. Uh, to Jim's point, maybe round up a few folks, you know, from town meeting and from other boards to get their two cents and their experiences before we do anything, just as an exploratory thing from this board's perspective, um, and then decide where to go from there, if anywhere, right? Um, like I said, I, I am I am not pushing a charter commission, but like you know, my brain just jumps there because it's like, oh, there's there's a solution, right? Uh, but your solution is 110 percent viable, and I think that we should we should exercise any options we can before going the route of, hey, everybody, we're <laughs> opening the floodgates to a petition of 2,000 plus people uh, and looking for people to fill in like the seat. So, um, all right, is is there any? I mean. Any further discussion or any disagreement with the notion of baby stepping this forward? No. no? Okay. All right. Um, Paul, John, anything you guys want to add? No. No. Okay. That's fair. Uh, okay. Uh, item 83. We've got approval for minutes. Uh, we've got the regular session from 213, uh, 227, and 313. Uh, if anybody saw any uh, edits or amendments when they had it through, or caught any last minute just now, speak now forever hold your peace. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve uh, 213, 23, 227, 23, and 313, 23. Second. Motion been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. Subcommittee reports. Uh, Jim, let's start with you. Um, I have a Sculpture Park Committee meeting uh, Wednesday, but other than that, I have nothing new. Okay. Joe? Um, I don't have anything on a, a supplementary report, but I would like to uh, just say thanks to Terry Toppy. She's um, leaving. When, when is actual date, Paul? Hey, next week. Next week? Uh, the end of this week. Next week. And how many years? 20, how many 24. Years? 24. 24, 25 years. So I'd like to uh, thank her for her time vested to the town of Burlington. And I hope she has her next level of what she's going to do, playing with that dog, Joey, or hers, I guess. So. Congratulations, Terry. Thank you. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not a subcommittee report. Just a reminder, everyone, Saturday, like as I mentioned, is Election Day. Hopefully, everyone will be out. If you haven't voted already, 
and get out. I think it's the most important vote you can make is the uh, local election, more important than any other election because it has the most impact on your day-to-day -day life. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, Terry's, uh, you know, 24 years is is worth note, uh, if for no other reason, and obviously there are, there are other reasons, um, and to say that, you know, people stay here in Burlington when they come to work for the town. Um, you know, they, they make a career out of being here, and, uh, you know, that, that says something for the, the type of environment that, you know, we've been trying to create and evolve over, over time. Mr. Chairman, for the record, um, Terry and I went to school from first grade up until 12th grade, and we're in the same classroom almost all the time because our last names mm. were so close alphabetically, but I've known Terry since she, we were both six, so good person. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you know, whether whether you're a resident or, or, or not, we, we, we have these, these deep, long connections with each other, and, um, you know, it, it, it means something. Um, so, like Mike said, election this Saturday. Get out and vote, please. Uh, we typically have about a, a 12 to 16 percent turnout. It'd be great to see higher numbers uh, this year. Um, as I always say, volunteer, please uh, go online, fill out the form. We've got uh, vacancies. We've got you know uh, looking for people to help out uh, in different areas. Uh, we saw tonight, you know, the Sons of Italy. You know, 52 years they've they've been contributing to the town. We we all contribute in different ways. Uh, you know, but the you know in, in terms of government efficiency, uh, if we can't fill seats on boards, we, we have a harder time getting things done. Uh, lastly, uh, you know, depending on how everything shakes out, I, I know that we we reorg as a board every year, and we're just about at that point with an election. Uh, it's been been my honor to serve as your chair the last year. Um, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, but you know the the reason that I enjoy it is because uh, you know I am very fortunate to sit on a board with with you gentlemen, uh, you know, who make my job that much easier, who are ears to listen to, and you know, voices to provide advice, and um, you know, I, I I couldn't do it without you, um, and so I appreciate you trusting me for the last year with the with the gavel, um, you know, you having a good time over there, you enjoying yourself. Uh, <laughs> when don't I? I, I know. <laughs> but uh, no, I've I very much enjoyed it, and uh, you know, I, I appreciate this this board and the and the efforts that we do, and the fact that we can we can joke and uh, you know not take things as seriously, and you know still uh, still get the work done. So that that means a lot. Um, all right, town administrator's report, Paul. Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything this evening. Nothing. All right. Well, then with that. Uh, Someone give me, give me a motion to, to motion get Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 4-0-0. Good night, everybody. <laughs>